And on that note, our final speaker is a Finnish sound designer, composer, and creative producer. She works internationally on participatory art and, uh, and game projects, and has co-created various LARPs over the past 25 years. In the Solmogotta book in 2020, she, together with uh, James Lorian MacDonald, wrote an article called uh, Ensemble Play. You can find this in the What Do We Do When We Play book, Ensemble Play, and which talks about artistic co-creation methodology and its relevance to creating better participatory experiences and in particular a more in inclusive LARP community with better play experiences to talk to us about dance, <laughs> dance card LARPing and how to combat it. Please welcome Anni Tolvanen. Hello, Nordic LARP Talks. Um, it's marvelous to be up here. It's also sort of really scary to be the last person on stage, especially because I like you can't literally see anyone from up here. Um, and it's scary mostly because all of your brains are already completely filled with the, all of the smart stuff that's been said, like talk, 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 talk. And for very selfish reasons, because I want your brains to have like a tiny extra like power to process what I am going to be talking about, I would like to invite you to do this participatory experience with me, which will take approximately 30 seconds. Are you game? Yes, you are game, because I'm telling you to be game. So uh, everybody stand up. There's a brilliant technique I learned from uh, LARP Writer Summer School. Credits to um, people who are behind that project. And now everybody put your hands like this. And then on count of three, we are all going to do our best angry T-Rex, <laughs> like LARP character. We were all LARPing angry T-Rexes for like approximately five, five seconds. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so one, two, three, go. <laughs> ah! Okay, thank you Nordic LARP folks, <laughs> you missed it down. <laughs> And with that, I hope I got some like 10% of your perception capacity um, returned. Um, Johannes, you may want to cut this pit out when this goes to YouTube. <laughs> I can now pretend to start from the beginning. So yes, I am Anne Tolvanen, and I am talking about how a full house beats a da dance card. So, um, who has been a LARP where your in-game day ended up looking like this? <laughs> That's like th for three quarters of the room. Who have been a LARP where some of your co-players en day ended up looking like this? Who felt like the, th that the co-player in question did not have actually time to play on the stuff that you hope to play with this co-player because they, they, they ended up looking like this. That's still at least, <laughs> at least like the half the room. Um, this is something that I have started calling dance card LARPing, which means that we go to the LARP and for various reasons, which I'm going to cover a bit later in this talk, we feel like that in order to get the best possible experience out of that LARP, we want to make sure that we have stuff to do at all times. And then we make these hectic plans of like, okay, I want to be on this plot, and then I kind of make these plans with these friends groups and like whatnot and whatnot and whatnot. And then your day ends up looking like this. Do you even have a time to LARP in this LARP? I don't know, I would not have. Uh, what is a dance card? In case somebody does not know, dance card is a 19th century convention where in a like an upper class ball, fine ladies would have this kind of physical actual card hanging from their wrist, and then uh, appropriate gentlemen would go and like go like, could I book perhaps a quadrille with you? And then that name would be written to the dance card, and then before the ball even got going properly, the lady would basically have their evening booked. I am now standing on the axe. I maybe came forward in search for my audience. Um, so that is dance card. You probably 
could figure out the relevance to Don Scott LARPing in general. Uh, when we go to a LARP, there will be a random group of participants in that LARP. Oh, also as a disclaimer that I forgot to say in the beginning, everything I'm going to be talking about during this talk um, is sort of works mostly within the framework of what we could consider the Nordic LARP tradition, as in organizer written characters, or at least organizer um, curated characters, organizer designed themes and plots and so forth. There are other forms of LARPs, but this is now the framework we are operating in. There are play like LARP styles where it is kind of expected to players sort of bring their own experience, but a lot of the LARPs that we do within this scene um, usually don't operate within that framework. And this is kind of the box we are operating in. Yes, we have a bunch of characters in a LARP. And the idea is that the kind of whatever character writing, plot writing has happened uh, brings us to this situation that there are like characters who sort of belong together and that kind of links those players together one way or another. And then the idea is that we will go to in-game and then those, probably after some workshopping, those people will kind of find each other and then they end up... We have a dead lap laptop, it seems. So I feel like we did the bit where you established that we're talking with the framework that we're kind of like we're talking about, and you can continue from from that place, and we'll splice it together with with editing magic uh, later on. Yes. All right. I will just pretend nothing weird ever happened. None of this ever happened. Right. Um, it's perfect as LARPs are always perfect, and there are no glitches during runtime ever, <laughs> uh, which is the reason why I'm also keeping my iPad here. Um, <laughs> This is often the designer plan. Like, we give everybody characters, the characters belong to some group, and um, then they will go in game, and then everybody has equal opportunities to be part of the group, and magic will happen, and everybody will hum have fun. Right? Right? Yeah. right? Meanwhile, in the real world, this is maybe close to the truth. So how, no matter how well the organizers and the team does their job, what often ends up happening that there are still few players, participants here and there, who don't feel that connected to their group. And that could be for various reasons. Maybe design doesn't really include these characters well enough, or maybe the game has a royal faction of pre-planning going on Facebook, and these people just don't have the time to be part of it. Well, but whatever those reasons are, there will always be some folks who do not feel that connected to whatever they are given at least before they go to the site. And of course, in optimal circumstances, they go to the game site, there's probably some workshopping, and these folks then may un end up kind of meeting the groups that they are playing with, and then there's some workshopping, and they kind of get closer and closer to the groups that they are connected with. And in optimal circumstances, we end up in a place where we have these player groups that have been able to workshop and create some good chemistry, uh, with each other and then they can go and play and everything is swell and fine. Um, and of course, like in most LARPs, we have several of these groups, right? But this is for simplification. I don't have, I didn't have time to do like a million stick figures and really complicated flow charts. So please elaborate from this very simplistic model. Um, however, then there are a lot of LARPs, especially in relation to the dance card model of LARPing, where even after this has been achieved, at least to an extent, this happens. So we have these workshop groups that have put whatever number of effort into creating, okay, what is the purpose of our group, what we want to do in this LARP. And then there are some individual players in the game um, who just have come to the LARP with a lot of preconceptions and personal plans of what kind of content they want to play. And in order to secure the opportunity to play that specific content, they maybe ignore a lot of the uh, casting that has happened and contact a lot of the players that they know who are also coming to the LARP, and then they start making plans that is sort of outside of what is the um, planned scope 
for the design. And sometimes this can be a positive thing, or at least it's not actively negative, but sometimes what may happen is that these people put so much effort into then playing that content that they themselves designed, that they end up ignoring the groups that they were, so, were supposed to be playing with. And that means that you may end up with groups where, um, <laughs> where the original purpose of the group doesn't work anymore for the rest of the players, because the, some percentage of the players in that group actually has their focus completely elsewhere in order to secure the experience that they at least think that they want to have. And now I want to ask a relatively personal question in relation to the previous questions that I asked. Uh, how many people in this room have felt personally excluded and rejected both as human beings and as LARPers because some people decided to go for whatever pre-planned things that they had made and ignored the kind of the relationship that you were supposed to be playing with them. That is more than half of the room. So clearly we have a bit of a problem here, I would say, because I think that's not cool, that's not nice. Um, which brings us to the fact that the more I've been thinking about this happening and why it happens and what can we do about it, um, for me it goes back to the fact that Nordic LARP is a participatory art form by definition. And by that I mean, or how I feel about it, is that every participant has an impact on the piece as a whole. So individual decisions that we make during the LARP will end up having this kind of butterfly effect impact on what all the other stuff that is going on. So if we just look at the dance card LARPing from a very self selfish perspective, like it might feel that, okay, what harm does it do if I just make some plans here and there? Because everybody else can kind of do the same, right? Well, no, because not everybody else has the possibility to do those plans. And also, if enough people end up doing that, all of the actually designed content in the LARP pretty much stops working. So the dance count LARPing where you kind of made the, make these detailed personal plans of how, what you want to play instead of staying open to the design as a whole, um, basically that means that if a lot of people are doing it, it doesn't work, it only works. Now I lost the strain of my thought, that's weird. I think you all got it. And I will just kind of gracefully move along. Point being, if one person does it, probably not a problem. If a lot of people does it, we don't have Nordic LARP anymore. We have something else. Um, yes, so if we end up in this situation, the coherence of the piece will start falling apart because the groups that were supposed to have a function don't have a function anymore. And this kind of behavior probably bites you in the arse in the long run in some way, which I may get back to also. Now, some of you might be thinking in the back of your head, but wait, I paid like 500 euros to be in this massively fancy castle, spaceship, uh, zombie LARP. I should have a right to do things that I find cool. And I do not disagree with that, but I think we all should, should stop the thing that why we think that the way to get the experience we want is to go to kind of manically fill the dance card and make all of these very detailed plans. Because maybe the solution is not the dance card, but the solution is look at the reasons behind that behavior and then solve it from another angle. So identifying some of the reasons that I have found for people doing this dance carding. First of all, people are fucking afraid. <laughs> it can be really scary to go to the LARP where there are like 100 people and a lot of content and you might feel a massive imposter syndrome and you're afraid whether you are accepted as a player and whether you are cool enough to be played with the cool kids and if any, anybody will even pay any attention to you. That is really scary and that's a valid fear. So then it might feel safer to just contact a few people that you like to play with and make sure that you have stuff to do with them. Control freaking, woohoo. My favorite <laughs> uh, vice 
you might feel like that you have to be sure that certain things go a certain way, because if they don't, something evil might happen or something bad might happen. You don't necessarily know what bad might happen, but you still want to be in control over your experience to the extent where it actually will end up blocking a good experience. Perfectionism, another one of my fa personal favorites, feeling like that I want these certain plots, like I have this amazing written thing, I have this amazing hooking my characters, and I have this such a strong vision, how I want it to play out. And then you start planning of all the cool things that could happen with that plot, and before you notice, you have kind of scripted that whole plot and recruited other people to kind of performing that plot so that it could kind of pan down completely perfectly, which is kind of dumb. Um, and that also has an overlap with wish fulfillment, as in that we have a very strong need or wish to play certain things in a particular manner, and thus we again end up kind of scripting and steering heavily towards getting a particular kind of content. And then finally also it's just pure elitism, feeling like that there is this particular group of people in this LARP that I really like playing with, and because I have paid 500 euros to be here and I have a right to steer my own, own experience, there's nothing wrong with me preferring to play with these people that I really want to play with and ignore the rest of them. Which again, in the end, would end up breaking the LARP and ends up breaking some LARPs, at least portions of some LARPs. But like, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, I forgot about this. Then of course, sometimes <laughs> there is a simply really bad LARP design that forces players to do a lot of planning, but that is outside of the scope of what I'm addressing here. We are now presuming a reasonably designed LARP where people still end up doing all of this stuff. Um, so we make these plans, these dance cardy plans, in order to address these worries that I've just listed, because we think that those plans will help us have a better experience. But do they do that? Does it actually help us having a better experience? <laughs> no, because dance card LARPing, the way I see it, uh, it trades perceived reliable play, something that we think will most likely work out, uh, for potentially much more interesting play. And the thing is that you cannot know who in the LARP can offer you really, really interesting game and like, like in interesting interaction if you do not try it out. You don't know like which ensemble of players in the LARP can end up creating something incredibly beautiful together if you do not give it a chance. The one thing that we know for a fact is that if you have an ensemble that you feel pretty lukewarm at the beginning of the LARP and then you are just like meh, this doesn't really work for me. I'm not going to pay attention to this group or this plot at all. Then it is guaranteed that that ensemble doesn't work out and it cannot provide you with good gameplay. So that is why making those plans, it can provide you with a reliably like lukewarm experience, but then also you are not going to be surprised that much. You are not going to find new cool things. Um, so. In short, if you end up ditching an ensemble for other types of play, you miss out on what the ensemble has to offer. And also you harm the experience of the whole ensemble. That is the negative part of this talk. And now that we've done the, this is what you all are doing completely wrong, we move on to how to do this better and how to do this right and how to address those fears in a more constructive man manner. Because there is such thing as constructive pre-planning. Like not all pre-planning is this mm, horrendous dance card LARPing that have been dissing now for way over time, I think. Um, <laughs> I'm going to run through this very quickly. So first of all, be open. Be open to you you don't know to need like you don't need to know where the good play is. Um, before you enter the LARP. The whole point of going to the LARP is to be open and see what happens and go find the cool things. Inclusivity. Like, we are very sensitive as human beings. If you are being very kind of resentful or like suspicious of somebody else, they are not going to 
give you their best collaboration. So the best way to get the good collaboration out of someone else is to be very open towards and inclusive towards the other people. And yes, there are some exceptions to this. There might be your abusive ex in the LARP, then you probably don't need to include that person, but that's usually a very rare exception to being inclusive. Uh, observe what other people are doing, if they're doing something really cool or you love their play style, you feel like that they're getting a lot of good content in LARPs where they're going to maybe just do what Frida was talking about in a way, like just take a break, observe your surroundings, check what is cool and just join in, like give yourself some breathing space instead of just running from one to another and figure out what is already going on and then join in for the cool stuff. Embrace the unexpected. If you have planned for things going a certain way and then they go completely the other way, treat it as an opportunity. You do not, again, like you don't know what could be, turn out to be a really cool thing later on in the LARP if you do not give it a chance. And this is, I think, personally, literally why we LARP. You want to have that LARP magic happen. Okay, this is all like really ideal and nice and fancy positive words like openness and like inclusivity and blah, blah, blah. But sometimes stuff just goes to shit, like your slides stop working and then your thought gets muddled and your machine gun um, performance on stage gets stopped. Um, what can you do to then, instead of pre-planning, if there would be sort of a LARP emergency where your game stops working, how can you prep for that? Uh, we were exchanging some ideas with Eleanor Seitha on the boat over here, which explains this, this boat terminology. And we came up with three tactics. There might be more. Um, one is anchor point, like designing for these anchor points. For example, the 3 a.m. for Everlarp had an anchor point by design, which was that if you uh, find yourself somehow like stuck or your game is not working out, go to the dance floor and start like just kind of dancing and interacting. That is your anchor point of getting back into the groove of the LARP. Um, you can have a lifeboat. And lifeboat is like something where you have agreed with, for example, some people that if I feel a certain way or if something else is not working out, I will kind of come to you and then we do that thing that we have agreed to do in such an occasion instead. So you have kind of some, some pl content planned that you can then go to and kind of sail away, <laughs> away in that lifeboat with the new set of content if the things that you originally were planning on do not work out. And then there's also an escape hatches, which means that you, there's a possibility or you have a plan for how to kind of cut short play that's not working for you, the good escape hatch that I've used plenty of times is to have an implicit and explicit agreement with the kind of close player group that if what we are playing on at any point stops working for any of us, it's everybody's responsibility to ask the other people to go off game and recalibrate. As in that we are not going to just try to muddle through this if anybody feels like it's not working out like open the escape hatch, go have a negotiation, and then let's change where we are going to. So if you are interested uh, to learn more, like Jok said in the beginning, in my introduction, uh, you can read a bit more about these concepts of like ensemble forming from, uh, from my and Jam James Lorian McDonald's article. Um, it's available in the book and also in the Nordic LARP blog. Uh, meanwhile, uh, if you, in your next LARP, or if you are pot potentially in an international LARP conference, for example, you have a full house full of beautiful, charismatic, intelligent, creative LARPers, uh, do play with them. Now, let's go play.